Hello everyone, welcome to the learning support video where we'll discuss the subdivisions of both anatomy and physiology. Now to start, it's important to know that the word anatomy, like physiology, have Greek origins, as do many of the anatomical terms and phrases that you'll come across. But specifically, if we talk about this word anatomy, it literally means to cut something open. So if you would like to write notes with me, let's add this together. It literally means to cut something open. So if you think about this for just a second, and especially if you've taken other science and biology related courses, you've probably had the opportunity to dissect something. And so again, of course, dissect means to cut something open. But not only do we cut things open in courses like anatomy, biology, and others, but we do it for a purpose. And that purpose is to study the structure of what we're cutting open. So if we wanted to give a phrase or a term to anatomy, we could simply say that anatomy is all about studying the structure of something. Now, on the flip side, we've got this word physiology, and if we define it, it relates to the performance of living organisms. So, again, if you're writing with me, let's write that down. Again, physiology is related to the performance of living organisms. And so, again, we can take that definition and streamline it a little bit. When we talk about physiology, we're oftentimes simply referring to the way something functions. So let's jot that down right underneath. So in a word or in a phrase, we could say that anatomy is all about structure and physiology is, of course, all about function. Now, here's the thing about it. Truly, one can't say that they have a great understanding of anatomy just by knowing structure alone. It's helpful to know something about function with structure. And in the same way, one can't say that they have a full understanding about how something functions without also knowing the way it's structured. So truly, we have to take both of these terms together to say that we know how the human body works. Thus, we take courses called anatomy and physiology. Now, let's take these two terms, anatomy and physiology, and let's talk about the different subdivisions of these two terms. Now, the first that I'd like to share with you is what we call gross anatomy. So if we take the word anatomy and we are to divide it into two major subdivisions, the first one would be called gross anatomy. And the second one, which we'll talk about here in just a second, will be called uh, microscopic anatomy. So when we talk about gross anatomy, you'll oftentimes hear the word macroscopic anatomy as well. And when you hear this term macroscopic anatomy, what I'd like you to focus on is really the beginning of this word macroscopic. And so the beginning of it is macro. And so you may be familiar with this, but macro means large. And so if we define this for a moment, anytime we talk about or you hear someone talk about gross anatomy or macroscopic anatomy, what they're referring to, and we can write this together, is they are referring to the study of structures that we can see with the visible eye. In other words, we don't have to use any tools or devices to help us see something or to explore its structure. 
we just used our natural eyes. And so if we talk about the subdivisions of gross anatomy, we have three that we focus on. The first one is what we call surface anatomy. Then we also have regional anatomy. And then third, we have something called systemic anatomy. And so the first one, surface anatomy, is almost given to us just by the term alone. Anytime we talk about surface anatomy, we are talking about the study or, or the examination of the external features of a structure. So again, it's related to the study or examination of external features. And when we talk about regional anatomy, we're referring to the study or examination of a region of the body. And last but not least, anytime you hear the word or phrase systemic anatomy, you probably already guessed this, but we're referring to different systems of the body. So just for a brief example here, if we are to study surface anatomy, and let's say we're interested in studying the eye, as it relates to surface anatomy, this would mean that we would be investigating the exterior structures of the eye. In other words, the things that we can see naturally without any tools or devices. So this would cause us to study things like the iris or perhaps even the eyelashes, those things we can see readily with our, na our natural or unaided um, eye. Now, the next term, regional anatomy, we've already said relates to our study of regions of the body. If you have the opportunity to study the skeletal or muscular systems, you'll oftentimes study those based on regions. For example, if you study the skeletal system, you'll oftentimes first study the lower extremities, which would be the legs, the, the, the foot and the ankle, or you may study the upper extremity, which would include things like your arms, your torso, your head, your neck, and spine. And so those are regions of the body and so we could study anatomy that way. And of course, last but not least, we can study the various systems of the body. We can study the cardiovascular system, uh, the nervous system, the skeletal system, and so on and so forth. And again, with gross anatomy, we're just looking at the structure. Now, the next term that I'd like to show you here is microscopic anatomy. And so if macroscopic anatomy is the study of structures that we can see with the visible eye, of course, microscopic anatomy is going to be the study of structures that cannot be seen with the visible eye. We would, of course, need something to help us see it. We would need, you probably guessed it already, we would need a microscope. With cytology, we're talking about the internal structures of individual cells. And with histology, we're actually talking about the collection of cells. And we call a collection of cells tissues. So in other words, it is possible for us to study the structure of cells and it's possible for us to study the collection of cells which we call tissues. And so of course the terms histology and cytology are very similar. Now let's take a bridge here to talk about the subdivisions of 
physiology. As we talk about the subdivisions of physiology, we have four divisions that we can essentially talk about. We have what we call cell physiology, we have special physiology, we have systemic physiology, and then we have pathological physiology. Now for cell physiology, you can probably guess what this refers to. We are referring to the function of cells. And so we know that because we know that physiology relates to function. So cell physiology, again, is simply the study regarding the function of cells. Our next one here is not quite so obvious, but when we talk about special physiology, we are talking about the study regarding the function of specific organs. So for example, if we were interested in studying the heart, that could be our focus. And so we might typically refer to that as cardiac physiology. We could also study the function of the kidneys. And we don't necessarily refer to it as kidney physiology. We use a more anatomically correct term, and we say that that would be renal physiology. Now, our third category here is what we call systemic physiology. And with systemic physiology, you probably can guess this, we're looking at how a certain system functions. So we'll put our, as our definition here, it is the study regarding the function of a system. And last but not least, we have something that we call pathological physiology. Now, this one's a little bit unique here, um, and, but you may be able to guess what this refers to. And the first thing that I'd like you to see here is that at the very beginning of this word, we have this term that's often referred to as patho or pathos. And pathos essentially means disease. And so if we put pathological, meaning disease, with physiology, it simply means that we're studying how a disease functions in the body. But it's really a little bit more than this. We don't limit ourselves to studying just the disease. We also try to give attention to how we can correct that disease as well. Well, that's it for this learning support video. I hope it was helpful for you. I'll see you in the next video.